Hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Marco Hanna. In the past eight days, I've been using the HTC One as my personal daily driver. I'm ready to give you guys the full review of the HTC One M8. Now, I'll be using M8 to reference the brand new 2014 model compared to the M7 of last year. And we also have to find out if the M8 is any better than the M7, a phone that we deeply, deeply loved here at PhoneDog.com. I personally love that device. Had a great design, great display, great hardware, screen, every single thing of the HTC M7 was great apart from the camera and the battery life so we have to see if the brand new HTC One improved on that and also as an overall device compared to last year's model so let's get into the full review of the HTC One M8. HTC has done something bold this year. They gave us an all new one. The old HTC One was a beautiful, perfect device for a lot of people. It was built to Apple standards of making smartphones, it had a beautiful display, very good hardware, and it ran a skin that people didn't hate on. But the old HTC One had its faults, mainly the camera. It was the Achilles heel of all things. Its four ultra pixel motto made sense logically, larger pixels do mean more light and better low light performance, but with low amount of megapixels the resolution does suffer a lot. So for 2014, HTC introduced the brand new HTC One, but we'll call it the M8 to avoid confusion. It has a new coating which comes from stainless steel and aluminum, unlike the mostly aluminum device we had last year. This new gunmetal color is definitely eye-catching as well. It also grew in size this year. The device now measures in at 5.3 inches tall, taller than the slightly sub 5 inch M7. But I almost have to say this phone may be too big. My hands are pretty averagely sized, but the corners are a reach for my hands. The display now measures in at 5 inches and houses a resolution of 1920 by 1080. It's slightly lower in pixels per inch than the M7 HTC One, but at 441 pixels per inch, it's well north of the retina boundaries. This display still stands as being one of the best in the mobile space. It's not as saturated as Samsung's Super AMOLED series, and I like that. I much prefer less saturation and more accuracy, plus the viewing angles off an IPS LCD panel. Maybe slightly warm to the eye, but it looks absolutely fantastic. And speaking of displays what's good about watching a video? The audio of course. I'm glad to say Boom Sound is back on the brand new HTC One. It's now 20% louder according to HTC and has deeper and richer tones. It did lose the Beats software but I view this as a good thing. The audio does sound more full and loud than the M7 but they both sound much better than any smartphone I've ever used. Now if we take a look at the back you'll see the lovely polycarbonate black accents and oh yeah these two cameras or sort of. The bottom one is the main shooter but not so loved for ultra pixel camera but with a new sensor. On top of that is a slightly smaller lens with the same resolution of 4 megapixels. These two are known as the duo camera on the M8 and what it does in practice is really cool. The top lens actually works as a focus sensor sensing the distances of objects in the shot. This allows you to use a U-focus mode after you take the photo which allows you to adjust the focus after. A similar philosophy to the Lytro camera we saw at CES two years ago. In practice, it works, but the results are certainly artificial. Of course, this is still a smartphone. It doesn't have a full-frame sensor to have amazing bokeh, but it does look artificial. The best results do come from faraway subjects and really well-lit situations. Sort of the opposite of what the HTC is really good at, which is low-light photography. Also, there's a big flaw of having two cameras. The HTC One M7 shot OIS video last year. This year, it was omitted because incompatibility with the duo camera system. If it were up to me, I would keep OIS and lose the second lens. So the video quality out of the M8 is now shaky cam. It does have a digital OIS, but it's not as good as having an actual optically stabilized image. The camera software has gotten a little bit better from the M7, but it's still disorganized the deeper you go into the settings, and what's up with the selfie becoming the new term for front-facing camera? The front-facing camera is rated at 5 megapixels and takes really wide-angle photos. Now one thing that I have noticed is the video quality out of the front-facing camera does look a lot worse than the photo quality, which must be some kind of software gimmick. Now it's to the really good stuff. The M8 comes with a Snapdragon 801 chip clocked in at 2.3 GHz. It's the same quad-core chip used in the Samsung Galaxy S5, but with a slightly slower clock speed. RAM is also at 2 GB. The result of this makes the M8 the smoothest Android device currently on the market. That includes you, Nexus 5. I've never hit a spot where this phone has lagged, froze, or did anything that most skinned Android devices would do. Software also plays a huge role. One being Android 4.4.2 is the most stable form of Android 
and really any mobile operating system beating iOS 7 with the least amount of crashes and the new Sense 6, or the Sixth Sense as HTC likes to call it. Sense 6.0 is not a huge departure from Sense 5. It basically has a refreshed look to the fonts, the colors, and they have rearranged the skin. One great omission is the dock that was found on Sense 5, now replaced by on-screen buttons. Blink V 2.0 now accepts almost anything in terms of content. You can literally just search for a website and add them as a feed. This will make Blink Feed more useful than it was on Sense 5.0. Sense 6.0 is a breath of fresh air to Android this year. I will happily take Sense 6.0 over stock Android, and that's really extremely rare for me. Now switching gears to the Speed Freaks, as I said, the M8 is the smoothest Android device I have ever used. Smooth is not fast, but don't be worried. Its benchmark scores may be lower than usual and probably will be lower than the S5, but it's all about the consistency. For this test, I'll use Google Chrome to open up The Verge. Most phones will have a lot of trouble loading heavy content websites such as TheVerge.com, yet the M8 loads it just fine. No hookups, no lags, not a single complaint. You can check off things like multitasking, games, apps, and everything else. Battery life was also a huge concern for the M7, and it should be. Last year it was rated at 2300 milliamp hours, and it gave people huge problems trying to use their device all day. This year HTC gave it a slight bump to 2600 milliamps, but the main gains come from the new 801 chip plus HTC's power saver. HTC added two power saver modes, a normal mode which dims the display more often, uses data when you need it, but the extreme is, um, uh, well, more extreme. HTC gave us a chart displaying the durations of certain percentages of charge left. It gave about 15 hours on 10%. That's simply insane. I would show it to you, but sadly, these are currently not approved for the US carriers. Only international models will have this feature enabled, but that's for now. So my daily average with the M8 is great. Fantastic, really. When I go home after using it for a full day with severe usage, I usually have 20 to 40% left. It truly does depend on what you do, but even if a day of traveling, watching YouTube videos, tweeting, messaging, and everything else tech-savvy people would do, the HTC One still lived on, even in a non-battery saving mode. HTC has another great smartphone. Just like last year, what's holding it back? The camera for one, and the second reason, and the main reason why HTC isn't as big as they should be, is the Samsung ads that completely dominate HTC. Do we expect to see a huge shift in numbers this year? Probably not, but HTC does have loyalty while Samsung only has the numbers to show their greatness. The HTC One M8 is the best Android device of 2014 so far. It's the best looking, best feeling, best built, and has the features that I will use every single day. Its camera may be very off and throws me off each time. This phone should at least have an 8 megapixel camera, but this phone also offers a gateway to the future of HTC. I'm now more intrigued to see what they will have to offer next year if they do at all. This phone tells me that they will. So if you're wanting the best Android device so far, you're looking at it. It's the brand new HTC One M8. So thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button for continued support. Leave a comment. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter at phone dog underscore Marco and at Marco M. Hanna. And I'll see you guys in the next video.